Good morning, Year 4. Welcome back to another week of English. Happy Monday. Um, we're going to continue this English learning this week on our Viking theme. So you'll remember before half term, we were thinking about the story of the horned helmet. And I want you to think about one of those concepts that we learned right towards the end of the story about the Viking beliefs. So I wonder if you can remember, what did the Vikings believe happened to them when they died? Have a think. Where do the Vikings believe they went to? Yes, you're right. The Vikings believed that when they died, if they died as a brave, courageous warrior, and perhaps they'd died in battle to prove that they were a brave, courageous Viking warrior, then the Vikings believed that Odin would choose them specially to go to Valhalla. And we thought towards the end of last half term, didn't we, exactly what it would have been like in Valhalla. And you'll remember that they saw it as a giant banqueting hall. You can see this image here suggests what it might have looked like, where food that they will have wanted would have been available to them at any time. We know that they believed that only the brave and courageous went there. So there would be other Viking brave warriors so they could do all the fighting that they enjoyed doing whenever they wanted. And any wounds that they had would heal. OK, so any problems that they may have had when they were died would have been made better instantly. So Vikings weren't afraid to go to Valhalla. Vikings, in fact, wanted to go to Valhalla. So when they died, they needed to prove that they were brave and courageous enough to be able to go to Valhalla. OK, so we're going to be thinking about that as our learning for today. And today's learning, and in fact, for the rest of this week, is going to link to a new story that we're going to be looking at. So this story also has a main character called Bjorn, but you can see from this image here that Bjorn is a very different Bjorn from the Bjorn in the horned helmet. It must have been a very popular name in the Viking times. And this story is called the Saga of Bjorn. Okay, And it's a bit different to the horned helmet story because we're not going to be reading it as a book like we did last time. This story is a video story that we're going to be watching. So in a minute, we're going to watch that together. Okay. And we're going to be thinking about this main character of Bjorn. And you'll see from the beginning of the story that he's very keen to die as a brave, courageous warrior. He wants to go to Valhalla. OK, now we're not going to watch all of the video today. We're just going to watch the first half of the video. And because this video is going to be the context for our writing. So we're going to watch the first half today. And then at the end of the week, when we've done all our writing, we'll then watch the end of the video to find out exactly what happened to Bjorn. OK, so while we're watching this video today, I want you to think about what is it that Bjorn needs in order to be able to go to Valhalla. Who is he looking for or what is he looking for perhaps? Okay, enjoy. Some might ask, who is this Viking? And what made him throw a dwarf off a cliff? To find out, we have to go back in time. This aging, once mighty warrior is on his final journey, seeking a worthy death in honorable battle. Only then will he be allowed to enter Valhall, Hall of the Mighty Gods of the North, the only real home for a true Viking. <laughs> If he fails, he will find himself in agonizingly boring Helheim. This is the saga of Bjorn. Ha! Ah! 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 Ah!
Is Bjorn doomed to never die in battle? Will he never join the gods in Valhall? Is he condemned to suffer eternal boredom in Helheim? It appears to be his fate. <laughs> Hello, so welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our new story for this week, The Saga of Bjorn. So back to those questions that I asked you at the beginning of the video. What seems to be Bjorn's problem? Hmm, why does he not seem a very happy man? And also, who or what does Bjorn need to help him? Yeah, you're right. So his problem is that he feels that he's reached the end of his life, doesn't he? And it said in the video, the Honourable Bjorn is looking for somebody to send him to Valhalla. But you can see from all of the examples that we watched in the video, every single warrior that he seems to have chosen are just not good enough. The warriors are not brave enough or are not strong enough to be able to give Bjorn what he wants, an honourable death. So who or what does Bjorn need to help him? Bjorn needs a strong enough warrior, a Viking warrior who is brave enough and mighty enough to be able to kill him. And he needs to be able to die in a death that he considers brave and strong enough and courageous enough to be able to send him to Valhalla. Now you'll see from that video that so many warriors have stepped up, haven't they? Believing that they were strong enough, believing that they were mighty enough to kill the Honourable Bjorn. But so many misfortunes have meant that none of them were able to. We had one Viking warrior who was just a little bit clumsy, wasn't he? And ended up falling down the cliff and ending up on his own death and wasn't able to kill Bjorn. We had another Viking warrior who ended up chopping down a lot of trees and one of those trees landed on him. So therefore he wasn't clever enough or mighty enough to be able to kill the Honourable Bjorn. And lots of other Viking warriors have stepped up, tried to give Bjorn what he wants, and have miserably failed. So you can see there at the end of the clip that we watched, Bjorn is getting crosser and crosser. He just needs a strong enough warrior in order to send him to Valhalla. And that is going to be the focus of our writing for this week. This week, we are going to be writing a job advert, okay? And we are going to be pretending that we are Bjorn, okay? Advertising for somebody to apply for the job and that job is going to be to kill him okay so Bjorn needs to persuade somebody to do that job you can see he's asked many of Viking warriors before now and none of them are just cutting it none of them are good enough so he needs to write a job advert he's looking for somebody that will be strong enough and will be mighty enough to be able to kill him so what do we mean by persuade that's going to be the focus of our writing today. Now, when we persuade somebody to do something, it means that we kind of encourage them. We make them do something that perhaps they haven't really thought about doing before now. So it might be that we use words or we use pictures in order to help them to do that. OK, so we're going to be thinking about different adverts that do exist in order that do that for us. So. In our real life, coming away from the story of the saga of Bjorn, we are persuaded in life all the time. And we often, maybe we might watch a television advert. We might see an advert on the telly that persuades us to want something. Perhaps the latest toy, perhaps the Smith's advert on the telly that you've watched. And you see the most amazing toy and instantly you want it. OK, so you're going to be thinking about what is it that those adverts do that make us want that toy. It might not be a TV advert, it might be a radio advert, something that you hear on the radio, perhaps a new television programme is being advertised and then it makes you want to watch that TV programme. Okay, so again you'll be thinking about what did that radio advert do 
that made me want to watch that TV programme. And actually, a number of adverts are not just ones that we watch on the telly, they're not just ones that we hear on the radio, but they're often adverts that we see written down. And we see adverts like this all the time, usually in forms of posters. Okay, and that's what we're going to be producing by the end of the week. By the end of the week, you are going to have written your own persuasive advert in the form of a poster to persuade a Viking warrior to apply for the job. OK, we want a Viking warrior to step up and apply for the job of sending Bjorn to Valhalla. Now, before I can ask you to write your very own persuasive advert or create your very own persuasive advert poster, we're going to need to look at some examples first of all, aren't we? OK, so on the Google Drive, you're going to find six different examples of a persuasive advert. OK, so you've got one here, which is called the Marvelous Mighty Monster Truck. You've got another one called Wonderful Wally, a helping hand. You've got one here called Wanted, a, mi a, a mighty warrior to beat the best. Wanted, vile villains today. Or warrior, knight of the round table. And the excellent Easter, Chicka Chock. OK, so I want you to have a look at all of those six adverts today. And I want you to just have a read of them to begin with. And once you've had a good look at the six different adverts, I want you to start thinking about what things do they all have in common? So what things did you notice that were in all six of these adverts? OK, and that's going to be your common list of features. So you might just want to use some bullet points. OK, to help you. And I want you to write a list of things that you think a good persuasive advert needs. OK, what do they all have in common? And I don't want you to think about just the things that you can see on the page. I also want you to think about the types of words that might be being used or the types of sentences that perhaps will be written as well. OK, so I want you to pause the video in a moment. Have a look at all six of the um, persuasive adverts and just create your bullet pointed list of all the things that you think a good persuasive advert needs. Once you've done that, I want you to decide which advert is going to be the best advert, the one that you think we're going to be able to use to help us for Bjorn. OK, so pause now and come back to me in a moment. OK, I hope you enjoyed reading all of the persuasive adverts and I hope that you've created a list now of all of the things that a persuasive advert needs. We're going to have a look at that together. So hopefully you will have seen from looking at the six, perhaps you could have started to sort some of them into two different groups because you can see that the purpose of some of these adverts are different depending on what it is they're advertising. So if I look at this one, for example, the Marvelous Mighty Monster Truck, I know this one is persuading us to buy something and it's making this mighty monster truck sound like it's the best toy in the world. So this one is persuading us to buy a product. OK, so that's advertising a product to buy. When I look at this one here where it says wanted vile villains today, this one isn't advertising a product. This one is advertising a job. So again, they want somebody to come forward to do something. And it says they're ever considered becoming an arch enemy. So they want somebody to be somebody's enemy. OK, so I could put this one in a separate pile because I know that's not advertising a product. When I look at this one, the wonderful Wally, a helping hand. And again, once you've read that, you will have realised that, again, they're trying to persuade us to buy this robot, aren't they? So it's a product to buy. So that would go in this section over here. OK, and the same as this one, the excellent Easter egg, Chicka Chock. This one also is persuading us to buy something. So this will be added to this pile. And hopefully you realise that these three all go in the same pile here because these three are the ones that are advertising a job. OK, so these is this style of advert that's going to be more useful for us for this week, because that's exactly what Bjorn needs, isn't he? He wants somebody to step forward for a job for him. OK, now I did also ask you to think about which one was your favourite one. Which one do you think is going to be most useful for us? And hopefully you will have agreed that this one here, let me just make it a bit bigger so that we can see it. This one here is going to be the advert that is going to be most useful for us. So I have enlarged it so that we can look at it closely together. OK, so I wonder what list of things you came up with. Let's have a look together at the order and see what sorts of things are we going to need to do. So what did you spot? 
yeah, hopefully you've noticed that it needed a title, something that's going to grab the reader's attention. And hopefully you will have noticed that it's got a bit of a play on words in the title. So to beat the best, alliteration has been used here. And I'm sure you will have spotted that that was used in lots of other the, um, of the different um adverts as well there was some perhaps wordplay i know for the easter egg one if we go back and look at this one an excellent easter chicka choc okay so they've used the alliteration here but they've also used a bit of a joke as well haven't they excellent so perhaps playing around with words in a title is going to be one of those features that we will need if you haven't already got that on your list make sure you add that in okay so a catchy title that perhaps has some alliteration or playing around with words to make it a little bit exciting okay hopefully you will have noticed one of the other things that all of the adverts has is a diagram or a picture something that's going to draw the reader in okay that catches their attention now in one of the product adverts it was a picture of the product but in this job advert you can see the picture is kind of given a little bit more information about the job that the person's going to need to do so the axes there draw the attention and hopefully you noticed that it has some rhetorical questions in here so two rhetorical questions have been used here to kind of make the make the reader think that yeah they're the right person for the job they have to say yes to these rhetorical questions do you love the thrill of battle well they wouldn't be a viking warrior if they weren't and are you thirsty for the excitement of hand-to-hand -hand combat okay so two rhetorical questions where the reader has to say yes to so if you haven't got rhetorical question on your list make sure you add that too okay Let's continue reading. What else did it say? So then you can see we've got a bit of an introduction here. So the first paragraph is just two short sentences which introduces the job to the person. And again, what features can you spot? Are you bored of your day to day humdrum life? Humdrum is another word for kind of boring and ordinary. Nothing exciting really happens. Do you long for adventure and the excitement of battle? Then this could be the ideal job for you. So the purpose of the introduction, the first section of our, of our advert, is going to have some more rhetorical questions there to make the reader feel that, yes, they're the right person for the job, but also make them feel like they are the best person. OK, so this could be the ideal job for you. That's kind of a bit like a read on sentence where it makes them read the rest of the writing there. OK, to find out what that job is. OK, so let's read on to the next section. I wonder what features you spotted here. We're seeking the boldest, bravest, mightiest warrior that the world has ever seen to fulfil the lifetime ambition of a hardy powerhouse of a man, the Honourable Bjorn. After many years of successful invasions, it is now time for Bjorn to make his journey to the afterlife, the only true home for a courageous Viking. All he needs is an honourable death in battle to complete his aspirations. In order to achieve this, he requires a respectable opponent who is willing to face him in battle. So what was the point of that paragraph? What was the purpose of that being written? Yeah, you're right. It's telling the reader exactly what the job is. So exactly what Bjorn is looking for. He's not just looking for any old warrior. He's looking for the boldest, the bravest, the mightiest warrior. So you can see lots of adjectives are used there to make it really, really clear as to what this job is. And it's to fulfill the lifetime ambition of the powerhouse of so the strongest man, Bjorn. OK, and it also kind of gives a little bit more information of exactly what they need to do. OK, so it requires a respectable opponent willing to fit, willing to face him in battle. So it tells the reader exactly what the job is. OK, so hopefully that's on your features list as well. If it's not, make sure you add it. OK, let's read on. It says our ideal candidate would be strong, lean and muscular with a powerful physique like an ox, fearless in the face of danger and prepared to go in for the kill without hesitation, and noble and skilled in the art of war in order to defeat our vicious viking. So a different section here, what was the purpose of that section? That's right, it tells the person who's applying for the job the qualities that they must have as a person, the good things about them. So again, lots of adjectives that have been used. So hopefully adjectives is on your features list already. But you can see that it's been written as bullet points. So it makes it really, really clear to the reader a list of qualities that they must have in order to be able to apply for the job. 
Okay, so qualities might be something that you need to add to your list as well. And that's described, first of all, using adjectives, strong, lean, muscular, but also using things like similes with a powerful physique like an ox. OK, so really making this person sound like they are the best person for the job. OK, now let's read on for that last paragraph and see what other features we can spot. In return, you will receive the glory and honour of knowing you have provided one of your warrior brothers with a suitable end and safe passage to glorious Valhalla. In addition to this, you will be showered with glory and well respected throughout the land. Surely no other, work, no other reward could be greater. If this sounds like the job for you, please do not hesitate to apply now. So what was the purpose of that last paragraph then? Yeah, you're right. If somebody's going to be persuaded to do something, then they need to know what they're going to get for it. OK, so they need kind of something in return, a reward, perhaps, for doing this job. And in this case, it's going to be the honour, OK, and the glory that they're going to receive for doing that. OK, and that is another way of persuading the reader to really make sure that this is the right job for them. OK. So hopefully you'll see then from looking at all of our advert, if we go back to the beginning there, from looking at all of our advert, we can see that there's quite a few things that we're going to need. We're going to need a title. OK, we're going to need some rhetorical questions. We're also going to need four main sections. So we're going to need an introduction to make the reader read on. We're going to need to explain what the job is. We're going to need to explain the qualities that the person needs in order to be able to apply for the job. And finally, we need to say what they're going to get if they do the job well enough. OK, so you can see six main things that we're going to be thinking about. And hopefully those six things are on your list. You've probably got some other things on your list as well about the different types of words that you're going to need to use. Or perhaps different pieces of punctuation as well that you're going to need to use, which also will be really, really helpful for you. OK, so. A final thing that I want you to think about then, which will lead in nicely to tomorrow's lesson, I want you to start thinking about what type of person is Bjorn going to be looking for? Because clearly the Viking warriors that he has had already are just not good enough. So I want you to think about, and I don't want you to write anything down for this part of the lesson, I just want you to think about what sort of a person, can you get an idea in your head of the sort of person that you think could apply for this job and what they might look like okay i'll leave that thought with you for today then make sure you keep your features list that you've created ready for tomorrow because we're going to need that for tomorrow's lesson and through the rest of the week that's it for today well done i'll see you tomorrow bye for now